So what we ended up building was basically a petri dish, except that it's two feet by four feet. And the way we set it up is that there are nine bands, and at the base of each of these bands, we put a normal petri dish thick agar with different amounts of antibiotic. On the outside, there's no antibiotic. Just in from that, there's barely more than the E. coli can survive. Inside of that, there's 10 times as much, 100 times, and then finally the middle band has 1,000 times as much antibiotic. And then across the top of it, pour some thin agar that bacteria can move around in. The background is black because there's ink in it, and the bacteria appear as white. First, you see they spread in the area where there's no antibiotic up until the point they can no longer survive. Then a mutant appears on the right. It's resistant to the antibiotic, it spreads until it starts to compete with other mutants around it. When these mutants hit the next boundary, they too have to pause and develop new mutations to make it into 10 times as much antibiotic. And then you see the different mutants repeat this at 100. And after about 11 days, they finally make it into 1,000 times as much antibiotic as the wild type can survive. And so we can see by this process of accumulating successive mutations that bacteria, which are normally sensitive to an antibiotic, can evolve resistance to extremely high concentrations in a short period of time. Okay, the scary music makes it even better. But uh, 11 days and survived 100 times, or 1,000, I actually forgot. This is pretty cool, very scary also. But um, what I wanted to show you is if I pause the video like so, and I take a, and I take a screenshot, right? And then... I show this in my Calculus 1 class as well. You will see why in a second. So here is my screenshot. At some random time, which I can record, right? Oh, it's 1,000 times. That's pretty cool. And now I want to find how much area was already covered by the bacteria. How would I do it? Area has a synonym in your mind, because you were tortured with homework with what? Area. Some kind of integration. Yes, that's also correct. But I was hoping to say integrals. Yes, integrals is good. So what we do is there's a whole there's a whole number of people who create the function like so. Here it is. One more function. This is how the borders of the new mutated bacteria. How do you find the total amount of bacteria? You will add them up together. Adding up so many things at the same time is integration. Integration from where to where. Now you want to find either this area and then this area and end up together, right? Or you can choose to find the empty area in the middle and then you know the total size of the petri dish, just subtract from that, right? So how would you do that? If I want to do the blue one, how would you do the blue one? How would you find that area? Any, any, so you are paid to do this. Any guesses? You're part of the team. Biological people there, they created this experiment for you. Computer scientists are coding this at a simulation. And now you have this paused moment. How would you find area? Yes? You have the size of a mm -hmm. So you can find the regular size of the last person. Yeah. Exactly, thank you. This is exactly what I was thinking too. And again, I don't know, like I did not do that, but this is what I would try to do. So the idea, what was just mentioned is, wanted to integrate it from right to left, from right to left, this is kind of dy case. If you flip it, it will be dx case, doesn't matter. Integrate this, find this area, and then subtract it from the total. We know the total because they gave us dimensions. Now you know how much bacteria was there at the particular moment. Now the, so, and that is integral, just reminding, that is integral, let me see, oh, I have the pen. That is integral from right to left, right to left. And then you just need to know the function on the right and on the left. And that is the hard one. This is the function that is not given as expression, it's not given as a data, it's on the graph. 
And we gave you sometimes functions on the graph and you was learning it increasing, decreasing from the graph. What does it mean to be concave up, concave down? Here you need to create this function. And that is what's done by people who do numerical analysis. They fit the data, they fit those points, and they try to create a function of it. And it also has its own complications, but when you're done with this, you will have function on the right, and you will have function on the left, and then now you know in calculus two class, in calculus one class, it's area between, below the graph, between graphs. That's integral, basic integral action. So I wanted to show you this. This is how scientists work, and this is the beauty of mm, how the people in different professions emerge into one project, which I told you before I was part of the group, and then some people would sample bacteria from the table, they would put it in a petri dish, bring it on, other people will make this video, other people will actually take recording and do numerical uh, analysis, or computer scientists will actually figure this out with a code. Mathematicians there either do modeling, or calculations, usually modeling and analysis, and sometimes we prove theorem if this is the unique solution and what else is needed. And all of this is a group effort, and then you get the solution, hopefully the cancer uh, cure, hopefully automatic cars on the highways, and so on. So like, it's lots of cool stuff happening from collaboration. <laughs>